You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on electric circuits. The topic of this video is combination circuits, and we want to know what are the main mathematical patterns and relationships associated with combination circuits, and how do you analyze such circuits. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. When there are two or more devices in a circuit, there's a couple of means by which to connect them. The first type of connection is known as a series connection. That's when the devices are connected back to back. Any charge that goes through one device will automatically go through the second device. The second type of connection is known as a parallel connection. That's when you place your devices in their own separate branch. There's usually a place on the circuit known as a node where current separates into two or more pathways with one pathway going through one of the branches and the other going through the other branch, charge will only go through one of the devices. A combination circuit is a type of circuit in which there's a combination of both parallel connected devices and series connected devices. In this example here, it's bulbs A and B that are connected in series to one another, and it's bulbs C and D that are connected in parallel to one another. In our second example, it's the same thing. Bulbs A and B are connected in series to one another, but bulbs C and D are connected in their own separate branches in parallel to one one another. In our last example, it's bulbs C, B and C that are in parallel to each other, and bulb A lies outside the branch is, con is considered to be in series with the parallel connections. The collection of resistors in a combination circuit act together to produce an overall or total resistance, which we refer to as the equivalent resistance, and we represent it by the symbol R EQ. For series connected resistors, finding the equivalent resistance is simply a matter of adding up the resistance values of all those resistors that are connected by series connections. And so if you have 4 ohms and 4 ohms connected in series, that totals to an equivalent resistance of 8 ohms. And if you have 2 ohms plus 4 ohms in series, that totals to a total resistance or equivalent resistance of 6 ohms. It's a little bit more complicated for parallel connected resistors. The equation looks like this. Essentially what you would do is sum the reciprocal of the resistance values of all those resistors connected in parallel. Then take the reciprocal of that to get the equivalent or total resistance. So for instance, if you have two 4 ohm resistors connected in parallel, I'm going to take the sum of their reciprocals, 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4. My calculator tells me that that's 0 0.50. Now I'm going to take the reciprocal of 0 0.50 and it's 2.0. So 4 ohms and 4 ohms in parallel is equivalent to having a single 2 ohm resistor. Now let's try 12 ohms and 6 ohms in parallel. When I go 1 over 12 plus 1 over 6 on my calculator, it tells me that that's equal to 0.25. Now take the reciprocal of 0.25. 1 over 0.25 is 4. So a 12 ohm and a 6 ohm in parallel to one another is equivalent to having a single 4 ohm resistor. Now that you know how to calculate the equivalent resistance for series connected and parallel connected resistors, you should be able to determine the equivalent resistance for a combination circuit. The strategy involves reducing groups of resistors down to a single resistor. Do it in a systematic manner beginning with those branched resistors. I'll show you how. Here's the first example. I have 8 ohms and 8 ohms that are connected in parallel and 2 ohms and 6 ohms that are connected in series. I'm going to begin with the 8 ohms and the 8 ohms. Since they're parallel connected, I can find the equivalent resistance of that section of the circuit by going 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8, which is 2 over 8. Take the reciprocal of that, I get 8 over 2. The equivalent resistance of those two branched resistors is thus 4 ohms. So the 4 ohms is now a resistor that has replaced the parallel branches, and it's in series with 2 ohms and 6 ohms. Since the three resistors are in series, finding the total resistance is a matter of adding them all up. 4 ohms plus 2 ohms plus 6 ohms totals to 12 ohms. That's the equivalent resistance of the original combination circuit. In the second example, we have 4 ohms and 12 ohms that are in parallel. I'm going to begin there. 1 over 4 plus 1 over 12 on my calculator comes out to be 0.3333 repeating. So when I take the reciprocal of that, I get 3 ohms, which tells me 4 ohms and 12 ohms in, in parallel is equivalent to a th having a single 3 ohm resistor. Now I have 3 resistors that are all in series to one another. So I go 3 ohms plus 5 ohms plus 7 ohms to get 15 ohms is my total equivalent resistance. 
For any electric circuit, whether it be a combination circuit or otherwise, charge will gain electric potential as it passes through the battery. And as it passes through the resistors in the external circuit, it will lose electric potential. We refer to these losses as the voltage drop and represent it by the symbol delta V. For branch resistors like R1 and R2 in this diagram, there's only one voltage drop. The voltage drop across resistor 1 is the same as the voltage drop across resistor 2 since charge will only go through one of the two resistors. In symbol form we can say delta V1 is equal to delta V2. For any resistor we can calculate the voltage drop from knowledge of the current in the resistor and the resistance of the resistor. We'd simply go delta V is equal to I times R for each of the individual resistors. Counting the branch resistors as having a single voltage drop, we can say that the sum of the voltage drops going around the circuit is equal to the voltage gained in the battery. For the circuit shown here, we would say that the voltage of the battery is equal to the voltage drop in the branches, either delta V1 or delta V2, plus delta V3 plus delta V4. For combination circuits like the one you see here, the current in the battery is equal to the current in every resistor located outside of the branches. Resistor 3 and resistor 4 are our series connected resistors. We represent current by the symbol I, so we can say I of the battery equal I3, which is equal to I4. But it's not equal to the current within the branches because when, when current reaches the node leading into the branches, it splits into two smaller current values one for each of those branches. But what we can say is that the sum of the current in the branches, I1 plus I2, is equal to the current anywhere outside the branches. So I1 plus I2 is equal to the I of the battery, or the I in resistor 3, or the I in resistor 4. For any resistor, you can always calculate the current if you know the voltage drop across that resistor and the resistance of the resistor. You simply use the formula I equal delta V divided by R. Here are some specific examples of how you would use it. For branch resistors, whenever those resistors have the same resistance value, we know that the current would split up equally to each of the branches in such a manner that the current in both of the branches would be the same. This is the first of two examples and the easiest example because the two resistors that are in the branches have equal resistance. I want to determine all of the above and I'm going to begin with the REQ. For a 16 ohm in parallel with 16 ohms, I can find out what that's equivalent to by using the formula 1 over REQ is equal to 1 over 16 plus 1 over 16. That's 2 over 16 reciprocated and I figure that the branches have an equivalent resistance of 8 ohms, but that 8 ohms is in parallel with the 4 ohms and the 12 ohms, so I'm going to go 8 ohms plus 4 ohms plus 12 ohms, that comes to 24 ohms, and that's the equivalent resistance of this entire combination circuit. Now I'm going to find the current in the battery, and I do that by going I of the battery is equal to delta V of the battery divided by the total resistance, that's 120 divided by 24, that's equal to 5 amps, the current within the battery. Now that I know the current in the battery, I also know the current in every resistor outside of the branches. So that means R3 and R4 will also have a current of 5.0 amps, so I can fill in the blanks there for I3 and I4. Now the two branch resistors have equal resistance, so when current reaches the node and begins to divide to go into the branches, it will divide equally since they have equal resistance. So the 5 amps will divide into 2.5 amps for one of the branches and 2.5 amps for the other branch, so I now know all of my current values. And I can calculate the voltage drops for each of the resistors by going I times R. For the branch resistors, that would be 2.5 amps times 16 ohms, and that comes to 40 volts. And for the R3 with a 4 ohm resistor in it, I'm going to go delta V equal 4 times 5, that's 20 volts. And for R4 with its 12 ohm resistor, I'm going to say delta V of 4 is equal to 12 times 5, and that comes out to be 60 volts. Now here's the way you can check your work. The sum of all the voltage drops have got to add up to the battery's voltage of 120. So when you consider the branches as a single drop, that was a drop of 40 volts. And then add to that the 20 volts for R3 and the 60 volts for R4. 40 plus 20 plus 60 equal 120. That away, we did it right. 
This is the second and final example, and a bit more difficult because those two branch resistors have different resistance values. They have a 12 ohm and a 24 ohm value. I have to determine all of the above, and I'm going to begin with the equivalent resistance, and I do that by focusing on the branches first. 12 ohms plus 24 ohms, what would that be equivalent to? So I use the parallel resistor formula, 1 over 12 plus 1 over 24 equal 1 over R. And when I do, I find out that R is equal to 8 ohms. 12 ohms and 24 ohms in parallel is equivalent to 8 ohms. Now that 8 ohm resistance for the branches is in series with the 10 ohms and the 6 ohms. So I'm going to go 8 ohms plus 10 ohms plus 6 ohms, and I end up getting 24 ohms as the equivalent resistance. Now to find the current within the within the battery, I'm going to go I equal 120 divided by 24, much like I did in the previous problem, and I get 5.0 amps within the battery. Now that's also the current everywhere outside of the branches. So R3 and R4 also have a current of 5 amps, so I'm going to say I3 and I4 are both 5 amps. Now at this point in the last problem, we went and we did I1 and I2, and we did that because we knew they had to be equal on half of 5. But that's not the case here because the resistance values are different than one another, so they'll have different currents. And so what I'm going to do next is find out what delta V3 and delta V4 are. So for delta V3, I'm going to go I3 of 5 times R3 of 10, and I get 50 volts. And for uh, the fourth resistor, I'm going to go I4 times R4, 5 times 6 is 30, and I now know 50 volts and 30 volts is the drops outside of the branches. Now I'm going to use the idea that the total voltage drop going around the circuit has got to be equal to the 120 volt gain in the battery. So 120 volts has got to be equal to this 50 in the plus the 30 plus the branch voltage drop. And so when I apply that formula to this situation, I find out that del the delta V in the branches is going to be 40 volts. So I can fill that in as well. Now I know the delta V and the R of both branches. So I can calculate the I and the branch. Calculating the I of the branch is a matter of going delta V divided by R. And so that's 40 divided by 12 for resistor number 1 and 40 divided by 24 for resistor number 2. That comes out to be 3.33 amps and 1.66 repeating amps. And if I sum this, these two branch currents up, I should get the current outside the branches, and I should get 5 amps, and I do. So I must have done it right. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. The Minds on Physics mission has several questions, much like example problem one. The two physics interactive sections are really excellent. I highly recommend equivalent resistance if you're having troubles with that concept. And finally, we have a tutorial page. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H. Thank you for watching.